Hello everybody, this is Ariane Arsenault from La Fée de la Mer, handmade soaps in the Madeleine Islands, Quebec, Canada. Today I am introducing a brand new soap and I'm so thrilled to share the process of making it with you guys. It is called the Bootlegger and it is a soap that will include local moonshine. So what is a bootlegger? Well, if you go back into our French Canadian uh, Acadian roots and maybe you know what bootleggers are, maybe uh, they were in your area too, but back in the time of alcohol prohibition, uh, bootleggers were people that would uh, smuggle in alcohol or goods illegally. Um, and from the 19th centuries, the smugglers would actually hide the alcohol bottles in their boots and that's why they were called bootleggers. You can also call them sometimes moonshiners or rum runners. These are synonyms and they're all the same things. They were people selling uh, alcohol illegally. Of course, this is from way back in our cultural history uh, during the time of alcohol prohibition. And this is only like a kind of a, what do you call that? It's like a clin d'oeil. <laughs> Uh, to this time of the past. So the moonshine that I'm going to be including into our soap today is 100% legally made. Uh, it's local. It's made with, it's actually a very cool uh, moonshine. It's made with, it's a cranberry uh, and dandelion flavored moonshine. So I'm going to go ahead, open this bottle, boil it down to remove the alcohol and keep just the reduction for my soap. Boiling down the moonshine will remove the alcohol content. And here I have my base solid oils and butters melting on low. I have coconut oil. Um, I have organic palm oil from Palm Don Right, as well as Baraka shea butter. Later on, I will add the olive oil. The essential oil blend for this soap is eucalyptus globulus, lemon fivefold, rosemary, a little bit of cinnamon bark, and a tiny bit of clove bud. Let's get these blended. Time for olive oil. The bootlegger soap will be colored in three different hues. I have white titanium dioxide, I have gold mica, and activated charcoal. Because the soap contains a sugary alcohol reduction and essential oils that are spicy, this may accelerate the trace and speed things up. So I'm not exactly quite sure how I'm gonna swirl and marble the soap batter. So we'll just see uh, how this soap behaves. I'm gonna put my colors in first, just so I save a little bit of time.
adding the moonshine. So far, the bootlegger is behaving very nicely. <laughs> Ooh, the tricky part will be the essential oils because they are fiery, so. Using a whisk and a scale to split things evenly, I will weigh in and whisk by hand each essential oil because this is a very spicy blend and I don't want this to thicken up too, too fast on me. So I'm gonna try this pour. Um, I've seen people doing this type of pour. It's like a sideway and a smaller mold. I'm trying the technique, I don't know what it's called, in my big slab mold and see how it goes. Let me go grab my big gloves so I don't hurt my hands. take the rest of my soap batter and swirl the top. It's actually very exciting. It behaved very well for a, a blend of essential oil with cinnamon and clove. I didn't add much um, because anyways you shouldn't in the first place with these essential oils. The maximum is 0.2% and the total of my clove and cinnamon is 0.2. So, it should be good. Just because I like to do things differently, let's take a spoon and give some texture 
to the bootlegger. So cool. <laughs> this soap is so pretty. I'm gonna cover and insulate it and we will be back shortly to cut it. The soaps are ready to cut. I do have a little bit of soda ash on the surface. And I'm gonna give you a quick tip if you wanna get rid of soda ash before you get to cutting your soap. And voila, this gets you rid of any soda ash. I actually made two batches of the bootlegger soap because I know people are gonna love it. And let's cut through one of these loops. I really like how the soap turned out. This design is very classic, very sharp. Uh, kind of looks like a sideway wave. And the color combination, very classic and, you know, nothing fancy, but it's just, it's just perfect. I am now spacing my soaps on my ventilated drying trays by Soap Equipment. Um, this is a very important part of the, pro of the process. Soaps needs to age and I never sell a soap under four weeks of curing time. Most of the time my soaps will have two to three months when they hit the shelves because I always have a lot of soaps drying and curing. So they get to sit there and age well, just like cheese or wine, guys. Good soap is aged. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for your support. If you're not a subscriber to my YouTube channel, please subscribe right down there. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you're always updated when I have a new video. If you want to purchase these soap, please visit my soap shop, online shop uh, regularly as they will be listed as soon as they are ready. They are part of our spring summer release. So thank you again so much. Leave me a comment down below if you wish to. You can ask me questions and check the description box for crafters um, information, links, tips and tricks. See you next time.